Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries coming from the center of the Milky Way galaxy. The region extremely close to the central black hole, Sagittarius A star, and the region that we usually refer to as the central molecular zone, or essentially the galactic center. The location where two decades ago the scientists discovered the central black hole, but in the process also discovered quite a lot of really powerful emissions coming from a lot of other powerful objects some which are still not entirely understood. And since there is so much activity going on inside this region, discovering new things is always expected. But in today's video we're actually going to be focusing on one particular discovery. Another really intriguing black hole, but not a supermassive black hole and not a typical solar mass black hole. Instead, an elusive intermediate mass black hole that sort of lies in between them. An object that theoretically is anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand solar masses, and an object that the scientists have always believed forms a fundamental building block of much larger, more massive black holes. But to date, only a handful potential candidates have been discovered with no official confirmation just yet. As a matter of fact, the smallest intermediate mass black hole, almost definitively confirmed to date, was a result of a collision of two solar mass black holes that resulted in something that's approximately 140 solar masses. You can learn more about this detection in the video in the description. But everything else to date has always been kind of speculative and only based on certain observations from various effects these black holes create around them. No definitive evidence exists just yet. But the scientists do expect a lot of these to exist out there because they're supposed to be building blocks for much more massive black holes. Yet where are they? Where are they hiding? Why is it that it's so difficult to find them? For example, in the past, a few scientists suggested that maybe some of them are hiding inside global clusters. For example, M31G1 cluster, the one that you see right here, was suggested to host one in the middle because of the very fast velocity of certain stars. But other studies suggested that all of this is possible without a black hole, so nothing so far has been even found in global clusters. Other studies suggested that certain locations known as ULX or ultra-luminous X-ray sources, were supposed to contain these black holes somewhere in the middle producing these observations. And these are very often found in various starburst galaxies, like the antenna galaxies you see right here, in locations where a lot of stars are generated all at once. But once again, it's possible that all of these emissions are produced by something entirely different. And even after analyzing approximately 300 candidates using various X-ray observations, only 10 potential candidates have been found. But these are just candidates, they have to be confirmed, they have to be reanalyzed, so far nothing like this has been done. Although intriguingly, certain galaxies, like this one right here, NGC 4395, seem to actually contain smaller black holes in their center. Instead of a supermassive black hole, the one here is a little bit on the smaller side. It's approximately 10 times smaller than the one in the center of our own galaxy, and is about 360,000 solar masses. And so technically this is an intermediate mass black hole, but at the same time, because it's a central black hole, it sort of implies that this was, once again, a location where various intermediate mass black holes combined into a larger one, but there was probably just not enough of them to create a supermassive black hole. So in some sense, this is more of a failed supermassive black hole, as opposed to anything else. But when it comes to finding these black holes, it's actually a lot more important to try to look for them here in the Milky Way or in our vicinity. And so far, once again, there's only been some speculations, nothing official just yet. For example, in 2001, the scientists studying the Andromeda galaxy discovered that at least one global cluster here has a very high chance of containing a black hole approximately 100,000 solar masses. And so far, this is a pretty strong candidate. But a much more intriguing discovery came from a Japanese university back in 2015. And this was actually right here in the Milky Way, very close to the center of the galaxy. When the scientists took a look at a gas cloud that you see right here, they discovered that the dispersion velocity of the cloud particles suggested that the gas here was moving a little bit faster than it should be moving, as if something really massive was pulling on a lot of those particles, accelerating them and creating these unusual formations. That something was suggested to be an intermediate mass black hole, approximately 100,000 solar masses. Although additional observations and additional calculations have also suggested that maybe this is actually a result of a large number of supernova that accelerated all of this over the past few thousands and millions of years. And because the velocity here was not in any specific direction, 
it was kind of challenging to prove that this was a black hole in the middle because there was no other observations otherwise. In other words, the scientists did not actually see any emissions coming from this region, indicative of a massive black hole. Nevertheless, the scientists from this university did not give up. They essentially kept looking for more signs of whatever is happening here, mostly because the theory of black hole formation predicts that these central regions should actually contain quite a few of these intermediate mass black holes orbiting the central supermassive black hole, essentially providing the necessary material for the black hole to grow larger over time. But obviously, because all of this is like 27,000 light years away from us, it is relatively difficult to see all of this, especially because there is so much stuff going on here already. A lot of these emissions could potentially have a lot of different sources. But nowadays, it's a little bit easier to discern some of these objects because of much higher quality of telescopes and a lot of different super detailed surveys of this region. And so, by using some of the new data from the James Clerk Maxwell Telescope, located in Hawaii, along with the Japanese Nobuyama 45m radio telescope, the scientists behind this recent study were able to collect more detailed data, discovering a lot of new features nobody has seen before. And specifically, within a few light years away from Sagittarius A star, the massive black hole, they discovered an unusual feature they are currently referring to as the tadpole, mostly because of the shape that it seems to possess. When zooming in on this object, it sort of looks like this. Now, this is a very unusual shape. As a matter of fact, it's an unusual shape that's very difficult to form naturally. And this is actually kind of related to the video I've recently posted about a supermassive black hole, discovered traveling in the intergalactic space, that also produced a telltale sign of something really massive passing through a region of space, with the best explanation being, of course, a black hole. A black hole that seems to have caused star formation along its pathway. But in this case, this unusual tadpole seems to be a result of something really massive stretching the object, creating something that seems to orbit a central point with a very specific dispersion velocity. And based on the velocity of individual particles, the scientists in this paper concluded that it can only be a relatively massive black hole, approximately 100,000 solar masses, or essentially a stereotypical intermediate mass black hole. Because it would be very difficult to produce this shape in any other way. But, just like with previous observations, once again, the actual black hole does not seem to produce any effects. And so, when the scientists zoomed in on this and tried to analyze this location in various frequencies, they unfortunately did not see anything here. No x-rays, no infrared, no radio light, absolutely nothing seems to be emitting any light. As if there is nothing there. Yet it does seem to produce gravitational effects expected from a really massive object. And so, to the scientists behind this paper, it basically suggested that it's very likely an inactive intermediate mass black hole. A black hole that's about 100,000 solar masses, but doesn't produce any emissions because there's nothing around it, and in terms of the actual physical size, would be the size of a large gas giant planet like Jupiter or Saturn. But because there are no observations coming from the vicinity of this region, it's still just a candidate and actually presents a bit of a mystery, because for all we know, it could be some other really massive phenomenon such as maybe a chunk of dark matter or something. Or something entirely different. In other words, the idea that it's a black hole is still only a suggestion. And a suggestion that's based on a lot of predictions and a lot of theories. But because of the size of this tadpole, approximately 3 to 4 light years across, and because the velocity of particles here seems to be about 50 kilometers per second around a central point, at the moment some kind of an invisible massive object is really the best explanation. It would be very challenging to explain these unusual tidal effects otherwise. But I'm sure we're going to hear more about this in some of the future studies in the next few months. At least for now, this is just a very curious discovery and actually a potential new mystery coming from the central region in the galactic center. And so, until future discoveries, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, check out some of the other videos on this topic in the description below, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.